Hello there, and welcome back to episode 4 of my tutorial series for Against the Storm. I'm Icon, and in this one we're going to win this colony for good, and we're going to talk about what's to do on the way to get there, and we're also going to talk about what's happening after we've won that colony. So basically, what's happening before the next colony, and also, if the time allows, I'm going to go into the uh, theory crafting of the next run, but let's see where this will lead us this time. So, we left off at a really, really good spot. This uh, neighborhood down here is now accompanied by another neighborhood up, down, uh, up here, which has also the encampment upgrade. We have a lot of building space around here. We have almost all the orders fulfilled before they even before we even have uh, new ones. Uh, we have fulfilled the old ones. That's pretty much as good as it can get. So don't worry if it doesn't look that perfect on your own first few runs. It took me a really long time to get there and uh, it has quite some complexity. I hope you can, um, I can help you though with these runs. Let me know how you are faring. So, the lizard's happiness suddenly succeeded. How did that happen? That was because the uh, hostility level just snapped up. That, well, that's pretty hard to tell why that happened. But we can do something against that. Holding down Alt here to show those uh, workplaces. I'm releasing one of the lizards out of their uh, duty here, and uh, here goes this. But there's still no more resolve going out there, so how does this come together? I know why. We've just received another um, entire reputation point here. We're at reputation 6 now, and as I have mentioned in the last episode, the higher your reputation grows, the higher the standards of your um, colonists grow and therefore the lizards aren't as uh, easy to please anymore. So they'd need a total reputation, a uh, total resolve of 22 to get reputation again. So we're going to cancel the lighter treatment because it doesn't serve anybody anymore and just step forward and deliver the aesthetics quest. We receive some things. What are we going to receive? We receive bonus production for all packs of goods, biscuits and wildfire essences. We need those wildfire essences to create even more hearths, but right now we wouldn't be able to build another one because we don't have the building space here. By the way, I picked up a copy of that building by pressing shift while the cursor was above that. can use that with everything on the map. So, a new blueprint due to the reputation. What can we do here? So, uh, we finally pulled a cookhouse. That's amazing. Let's pick that up, because a cookhouse can produce even more complex food. In the last episode, I have already picked up the smokehouse where we are creating jerky, and at the cookhouse we can now create even more different food. The more different food you can provide for your colony, the more resolve you'll have, the more resolve you'll have, the faster you win. Easy as that. So, on this one, we have a fishman cave. This is one of the danger glades where you actually need something. In the last episode, we had one danger glade where we actually only needed to invest workers, and that's it. Here, we need to select what kind of goods we want to put in. As I said before, simple tools always work. So do infused tools. These two options are always at your disposal. This basically means if you have tools, you can resolve a glade. But also, as you see here, the Fishman Cave can be resolved also with resin, with oil, with coal, or with sea marrow. Resin is the weapon of choice for me here, because it's obtainable by just chopping trees, and by all means, that's the most common resource right now. We also select people to do that, and now let's check this out. So we would get some nasty things happening if we wouldn't do that, but while we're doing this, we have another thing happening. A fishman totem spawns every 60 seconds, so we now have to select what kind of reward we want. We either take some goods, or we take the reward back to the citadel of the queen and get some reputation and amber for that. 
This time, I'm going to go for this reward, because reputation gain via these events is a decent way of winning the game, and one that I want to showcase in this first colony, because that was the way how I won my first couple of games and enjoyed myself thoroughly with that. Over the course of the next episodes, I'm going to introduce, of course, other strategies to facilitate victories, but I found that one of the most accessible and easily understandable ways to win the game. So, here the fishman uh, thing... It's pretty annoying. Every 60 seconds they spawn another event, which raises the hostility. And if you don't uh, work that away, you, have, you end up with a very high hostility, so you want to get rid of that. We also have another cookhouse, so let's put the lizards in there. And uh, we don't want to produce pigments. Everything you don't know why you would want to produce it, just turn it off. And then turn it on once you know what to do with it. That's a really good rule of thumb for this game, where you cannot do anything wrong, basically. <laughs> so, now we need also somebody over there at the rain mill because now we need flour. So flour will be made in our colony with roots, that's all fine and dandy. And uh, we're going to go over here. So we have skewers, let's make them out of insects and meat. Or alternatively, well, roots. So as you see there, we might want to up our agriculture by a bit more because we have more and more consumers. So. Overall, by the way, this game is one where you can never go wrong by producing too much food. By all means, there is no such thing as too much food. If you ever have too much food in your colony, you can always use it as a trade good. No biggie. So, here's one of the fishmen totem I was talking about. So just send somebody there and get rid of it. We also found a cellar. So we could now either rebuild that at a cellar, we can produce these goods, or we could salvage it. Under these circumstances, I'm going to just leave it as it is, because I am not really interested in the goods that I can produce there, but I'm also not too interested in the items that I could get from salvaging, so I'm just going to leave it there. Because you would need to invest bricks and fabric to uh, resolve that event either way, and that's just nothing I want to have there. So we could now start gathering the materials on this danger clade if we'd want to, but uh, I'm more bent on uh, winning this run here now. And check out the humans, since we have now access to biscuits and to jerky, their resolve is high enough to generate more reputation for us. So we're kind of like starting to win passively more and more. So new orders show up. Farm fields 24 and packs of crops. I do agree with that. Or we open up five glades and we'd get that. So I'd say let's take that one because I already have that many farm fields and I think it's going to be easier to resolve that. We need some packs of crops, but that should be the least of my worries. So here we can put up clothing and leather. I already know that I can produce clothing. I don't know if I have leather, but we'll see about that in a sec. So uh, we have clothing. We don't have leather. So let's get on over to Clothier and make sure... Well, no, we need to go over to the Weaver and uh, make sure leather is not going to be uh, used for that anymore. Okay. We also can deliver the luxury goods. Remember, whenever you resolve such a quest, turn it off before, otherwise you'll be producing stuff for naught. So, another point has come in. And we now need five people, or five, sh two shelters more. And uh, there we go. So we need packs of crops. These are made at the makeshift post. So let's put up people there. And let's see, we can make that out of roots and out of grain. So let's do that. Here we can put that up there. Oh, wait a sec, that's not what I wanted there. So I'm putting up um, farmers now into the herb garden during the clearance season. That's actually not smart at all because they're not going to do anything for the remainder of the year. But uh, 
we are already kind of like on a winning streak here. There's uh, not much more to tackle. We're going to acquire more and more resolve just via that um, food alone, because food is actually quite powerful. Now it's uh, just up to us to utilize the, the momentum we got. I'm just going to pick up another um, warehouse over here because I fear I feel like it's it's really useful to do so. We also got the carpenter here. He has the ability to create simple tools. By the time we have looted some copper bars and some crystallized dew, that means we can now make our own simple tools, which is uh, outright amazing. Also, the carpenter is best run by beavers, so let's do that. All right. So another fishman totem has to be removed and storm is setting in. Nobody's resolve is going below zero, so we're good to go. This storm is not going to uh, scare us in any way. So we do need more resolve though, so uh, not resolve, more reputation though, so how to tackle that? There's uh, all those caches out there, and since we now have a steady production of simple tools, we're going to just crack those up and send the rewards back to the Citadel. This is one of my favorite ways of finishing off a run, by just uh, opening up all the caches that have uh, piled up during a run before I was able to produce the tools, because now we got a uh, steady production of tools. The next blueprint, oh yeah, why not, let's pick up the Lizard House so I can introduce another ways and means to make your people happy. You can also have racial housing. The um, lizard houses make the lizards particularly happy. So uh, regular housing is one thing, but if you have a lizard housing, they get the bonus from sheltered and from lizard housing. So it's double as good. So we're going to put up some lizard houses here. We can't just uh, put them down for the sake of demonstration. Because, you know, we're winning anyways. Here I'm just waiting for the packs of props to be finished. The uh, slick shell brood mothers provide leather every now and then. So we should be able to finish the rainproof coats quest as well quite soon. So uh, we gain amber for seam arrow produced. I like that one. Grain production increases by plus one every 25 times it's produced. That's outright amazing. In the long run, you can achieve crazy grain productions, but we're not specialized into grain, so let's go for the other one. Always try to pick the cornerstone, which actually yields you some benefits, instead of uh, one that could yield you some benefits. And here we're uh, right now running low on food, but uh, that's technically uh, not true. But uh, if you ever run into that situation, well, here it's uh, happening mostly because we just have a darned huge population at that point. Easy difficulty uh, flings in insane amounts of uh, population on me, and that's uh, why we uh, ended up with a lot of these. So, if that ever happens to you and you notice that you don't even know what to do with the people anymore, you don't, uh, you're not forced to take the newcomers. And uh, if you ever run out of food, food let's call in Sahilda and uh, you can always call the uh, trader in early and cost for some uh, impatience. But uh, seriously, we are not really uh, on any problematic situation there. So now the remainder of the run will be uh, mostly about producing more tools and finding ways of grinding up the reputation. So I have gained a lot of amber by opening up all those caches. You can also check on out the uh, blueprints. Let's buy that forager's camp blueprint. We can acquire more food via that, which is which is actually what we need right now. And uh, let's pick up some more food. We sell all the amber. I'm going to sell some wildfire essence here as well because I'm I know that I won't need it this run anymore. So uh, we can also sell away some more parts. 
it's pretty simple. You you will and you will develop a feeling for what you need to finish off a game. Always keep in mind with your shopping spree that you need to shop in a way that you're able to win the game. That's the most important thing. We could have also bought those tools from her. What about that? So uh, we're not really featuring anything to give there right now. So I'm not. I could sell my last uh, few items for that. But we're actually producing those tools by ourselves, so I don't want to go too crazy. So let's send in more people for the next cache. We could also plunder that, but uh, for, for the sake of demonstration here, we're going to do this like that. And our cooks are going crazy there. So let's put up more people into the, into the buildings, so... At times you will run low on food, even though you are you aren't really low on food. That comes together sometimes when um, you have a lot of uh, raw food in the processors waiting to be processed, and then uh, you have kind of like a backlog. So we have bought the foragers' camp blueprint, so we can uh, harvest that salad. And as you see there, we're we're making slower progress now, but we're we're gonna get there. The leather will be will be coming in soon, and uh, you could now also go for further expansion and open up more glades if you'd want to. So let's uh, go and pick up that. We got another uh, pack of newcomers, so we do have enough housing for them though. And now we can pick up another blueprint. How about picking human housing? That's also a great idea. So we can give our human population some nice housing as well. The specialized housing, by the way, only features room for two people. So the uh, these are less, uh, effect less efficient and they cost you way more resources to build. So... Uh, but they are like resolve in a box. They are totally worth it and it's darned easy to finish off a game with that. Just check it out. Just buy those houses or humans went uh, to happy again. And uh, they are now producing resolve again. And that's uh, why it's pretty much worth it to do that. And uh, by by now you, you should have uh, noticed the, the basics or we have seen the basic uh, ups and downs uh, of a typical um, party matchup of uh, against the storm. We're now going to be able to finish off this game. We have two caches left open. Edge of everyone uh, is providing half a point of reputation, and uh, we have another point of reputation in the order list here. As soon as the last pack of crops has been packed, we're done, and that's our first victory. Then, so um, yeah. The easiest way to win the early games, to summarize what, what happened there, is first set up a base camp, set up income for for, for fuel, set up, set up income for, for food, set up a infrastructure to make the basic things, planks, bricks, and fabric, and then work yourself towards the ways and means to expand tools, and the other way is to expand towards food, like complex food, here, skewers, biscuits, all that stuff. This is the uh, other thing to work towards too, because that makes your uh, colony darned happy and racial housing to top it off. So you have a mixture of winning via reputation, uh, winning via resolve and winning via fulfilling orders and winning via fulfilling blade events and this way it's pretty pretty simple there is another layer beyond that and that's services like uh, building up a tavern and, and building a monastery and those things but uh for the start of matches we don't need all that so let's click the check mark here and win that game so our first victory is on us we don't get any deeds here because we uh well it's interesting 
I should receive uh, deeds. Deeds are your achievements, but obviously, uh, I have all these already. The problem is that I'm missing some experience, but whatever. So at the smoldering city, we can turn in the rewards we got for new... Ah, we unlock the deeds there at first. So uh, here you unlock... Or the food stockpiles you received from the colony, you unlock new perks. There's lots of things. And uh, you can unlock more resources whenever you finish settlement. You can unlock better embarkation bonuses. You can unlock new features like uh, consumption control or, or is it trade routes? Well trade routes or trade routes or new hub upgrades so there's a lot of good stuff going on down that tree so basically your 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 routine in this game is you build up a new colony and then you um you get your rewards from that then you you go for whatever rewards you want to have there you unlock some permanent perks and then you get on back to the map and restart all over again. The first attempt we went for was a quite easy map and therefore the challenges were quite mild. We were playing in the Royal Woodlands bi biome. There's also a ton of different biomes. Well, okay, a ton is a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but there's quite a few of them. There's the Marshlands, the Scarlet Orchard, the Coral Forest, and there's also the Cursed Royal Forest, and I think that sums them up. There's also these uh, landmarks there, which uh, if you ex do a colony right next to them, you receive special bonuses and you have a uh, special modifier. For example, here, the Monastery of the Holy Flame makes it that we cannot forbid food consumptions, something we cannot do anyways, or favor any species. So the trick I used in the last game to pump up the resource of the uh, lizards for every now and then wouldn't work there. Or here, there's a fishman ritual site, so uh, there are no orders here. So that's a really hard map to play, and we're going to avoid that one, because I personally think that uh, I wouldn't want to play that in the first place because no orders means you have a very very low lowered amount of uh, ways and means to gain reputation with that's a pretty challenging scenario to begin with but uh, we would gain as you see here on that icon artifacts artifacts and machinery are alternative currencies uh, or, or additional currencies to buy upgrades at the smoldering citadel so that sums it up for now. We're going to go towards the Monastery of the Holy Flame for the next one, I guess. And I'm going to leave the Pioneer difficulty and head on over to the Viceroy difficulty on the next game. But uh, I'll talk about that when we're there because uh, this would lead to far. So this episode tad bit shorter than the other one but that's pretty much all that i wanted to say about the pioneer difficulty when you watch the last four episodes or the last three episodes and this one you have really any everything in your pocket to uh to unlock veteran or viceroy difficulty by yourself veteran and viceroy do increase the amount of hostility that occurs and they also introduce blight rot and corruption i'll talk about these mechanics in the course of the next videos but uh, you can easily acquire that knowledge by yourself it's basically just one service more to take care of but we'll be getting there so thanks for watching i really really enjoy the series a lot and i hope so do you and feel free to leave me a comment down below i always love to hear from you folks and feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video and feel also i'd be happy if you'd subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell thing to be notified whenever something new shows up from my side i'm a daily content creator so if you like that content just uh, stay tuned for more 
and I'd be also very happy if you'd check out the support links in the description box below. There is Paypal, Patreon, or Buy Me Coffee as ways and means to support this channel directly, because I'm a small, free content creator. I have no big sponsorships behind me or anything, so I can really use all the support that I can get, and I'd be super happy if you'd check those links out. Either way, I want to say a big thanks to all the supporters out there who are already supporting this channel. It's outright amazing how much goodness you are giving me. So thanks, keep going, and so will I. Have a wonderful day, and see you soon.